suppose the, the, the pleasing aspect is that every week that we're focused on things we've improved as a team and uh, in, individually and collectively. So at the end of the day, yeah, to come and win two in a row, it isn't as pleasing to beat Collingwood last week as Melbourne this week. Yeah, I, I thought we, um, for the different scenarios that sort of unfolded through the game, I thought our players handled it pretty well and um, changed uh, their thinking or their ball use uh, through that. But I suppose uh, the beauty is we had Chris Judd uh, at the start of the second quarter and he's the one that uh, when the game sort of slowed up and become very flat, he's the one that sort of broke the game open and really changed it. So yeah, th that's the beauty of having a player of his, his uh, quality at our club. Yeah, I did. I expected to play a player in front of a while. Uh, I thought they did and at the end of the day they probably had their most effective uh, quarter was when they played more man on man. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, yeah. Oh, we just uh, went through some different scenarios that how it could be orchestrated and how we could, uh, do we just allow it? And uh, we did allow it for a while, then we went man on man, that seemed not, not work as well. And then we, we probably counter-attacked better than they did and uh, used the ball a little bit better at times. But at the end, we became sloppy, which allowed them to get into the flow of the game. And uh, I thought there was parts of the game that were sloppy um, from our side of things. But you know, I was really pleased that you know, our players, I suppose they had expectation this week, where last week they didn't. And uh, to come out and, and produce that performance. And at the start of the day, if you said a 33 point victory, I would have taken it any day of the week. Maybe a little bit of fatigue. Um, we've had uh, the last two weeks have been pretty solid in our program. Mm. And then next week, we've got a six day turnaround, turnaround against Adelaide, and then the following week against West Coast, we travel on a six day. So it was always programmed, uh, always put into our program that we would go hard for these two weeks. And, I think maybe that might be just the back end of uh, some solid training. No, I think we sort of we sort of walked away from last year and uh, with a lot of things, that, you know, the records and that that we sort of touted about three or four weeks ago. And now we're sort of looking at what what we can do as a club in 2008, not what was done, you know, 2007 or five. You know, we might look at history and, and see what uh, some of the good things that, have, that has happened around the current football club, club to educate our players, but. We're not going back to look at what happened in 96 or the past years. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose when you kick one out of a pack like Brendan did with a soccer one and then you kick one from the 60 out on the bed along the siren goes, I think they're just pretty special players. When they get the ball in, ball in their hand, they usually score. And yeah, that's, uh, you know, kick, Brendan's had seven kicks, I think, for seven goals. It's just uh, an amazing performance. Yeah, I thought it was really pleasing that he chase and tackle and trying to get the ball back for us. That was the real pleasing part about it. We know he can do all these special things, but just that, uh, his chase down on Jones and on these bikes, it was just really uh, great for the team. And that's he's the barometer of our team of doing that. He can really spark and ignite the team when he chases bikes from behind him. No, I haven't. You know, I've, uh, I've seen sort of pretty uh, similar Brendan Pavola. Um, we all know about the incident, and uh, before that, he'd done everything right around our club. But he had a misdemeanour, and it's been dealt with. And you know, that's probably a credit to Brendan that uh, he hasn't changed what he focused on in pre-season, and uh, he's applied that into his games. And I think we're seeing the, uh, the fruits of his work. Yeah, I thought it came from Chris Jones. I thought he, you know, he was the one that really changed the game in that second quarter, where um, you know he won some clearances, and you know he just ran. Took, took the boys on and uh, you know just he set us up. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's pretty correct. I think when you can dodge two players the way he did and uh, you know kick it to Brendan uh, down the field in the uh, was it the last quarter or one of the quarters there that uh, you know that sideways movement, lateral movement, that power in his game is really coming back. So yeah. not just what he what he does with the ball and the way he runs and his, his pace and that, but he's setting the boys up out in the field and. You know, he's chase and tackle. When you look at Chris Judd, he might get 30 possessions, but he'll have, a, he'll have six, seven, eight tackles as well. Uh, so I think he's just a real team player. You know, it's not about Chris, he's not uh, phased, he'll do any instruction. He's just a, you know, a great all-rounder, I think, in the competition.